Welcome to the Servants of Grace podcast hosted by Dave Jenkins. Our podcast exists to provide trustworthy expository messages through the Bible and faithful answers to your theology questions. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the Servants of Grace theology segment. On today's episode, a listener writes in and they have a great question and the question is, what are the lost books of the Bible? Wow, this is a good, good, good question. Well, the English, uh, the English Bible, uh, it composes, it comprises itself of thirty-nine books in the Old Testament and twenty-nine in the New Testament, totaling sixty-six books. And so, when men wrote the Bible, they're they're well aware they were writing scripture. The faithful community of the people of God recognize these books as scripture because the Holy Spirit caused them to, to recognize the master's voice in them. Each new book was added to the recognized canon beginning with the collection Moses began. And the process continued through the Old Testament and even into the New Testament. In 2 Peter 3.16, Peter uh, you know, refers to Paul's letters as already part of the canon of scripture. And so the question that we're answering today is, what are the lost books of the Bible? It's, it's an important one, but before we answer it decisively, we need to understand something of the early church background. During the cent- second century AD, Martian the heretic produced a list of his approved books of scripture. He held that the Old Testament God was an evil God of wrath. And in this thinking, this was incompatible with the God of scripture. And so he eliminated the Old Testament in the Bible along with those places in the New Testament that refer to God in the Old Testament. And so to answer Martian, the early church formulated once and for all the list of all the books in the canon of Scripture. All the church did in recognizing these books was to utilize the books of Scripture that were already in circulation among the churches. A few questions are raised about Jude and John's letters, but the church quickly determined that these uh, were scripture and they were a- 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 apostolic and-, and nothing suspicious was contained in their content. Now, now several other books, such as the first letter of Clement and the Shepherd of Hermes, these were proposed for inclusion, but the church didn't include them because the authors of these books uh, indicate a difference between their view of authority and the apostles' authority. Now, none of the other books in circulation were seriously considered because the church deemed them frauds. Now, throughout church history, there have been some disputes about which books belong in the canon of Scripture. And yet the church has always agreed in such discussions that the canon was closed with the Apostle John's death. While no Christian today should seek to add to the canon, there are those within the visible church today who claim to have a new, direct, and even binding words of God. Please beware of this, my friends of those claiming to have a new revelation coming from God. You see, the Bible alone, it's reliable and trustworthy. It's without error. It's without the possibility of error. It's for every phase and every part of, uh, of life, and it's clear. It's the clear word of God. So anyone who comes to you with a new word outside of Scripture is actually engaging in heresy. Now that we've discussed at some length the background of, of how and why the canon was organized, we, we can now dive into the question that our one of our friends, our listeners, asked, what are the lost books of the Bible? Well, it's important to say there are no lost books of the Bible or books that were taken out of Scripture or even books missing from the Bible. Every book that the Lord intended to be in Scripture is there. And while there are many legends and even rumors of lost books of Scripture, the books were not lost, but rejected. There were hundreds of religious texts written during the same time that that many of the Bible's books were written. Some of these books contained actual historical events, 1 Maccabees. Others contained good teaching, the wisdom of Solomon. But these books are not inspired by God. And so if we read any of these books, such as those in the Apocrypha, uh, we have to treat them as fallible, historical, and even religious books, but not as the inspired, inerrant, sufficient uh, uh, word of God. In fact, the Gospel of Thomas was a forgery written in in the 3rd or the 4th century AD. The the Gospel of Thomas, it claims to have been written by the Apostle Thomas, but it wasn't. The early church rejected the Gospel of Thomas as heretical, as it contains many heretical teachings, teachings of Jesus uh, supposedly said or even did, and yet none of it is true. For example, the Gospel of Thomas has Jesus saying in saying seven, blessed is a lion that a, that a person will eat and the lion will become human. 
And in saying 114, it says, Every woman who makes herself male will enter into the kingdom of God. The Gospel of Barnabas was not written by the Barnabas we meet in Scripture. And the same thing can be said of the Gospel of Philip, the, the, the last uh, times of Peter and more. All of these books are pseudographical, meaning they are ascribed to a false uh, author. Now, in Scripture, we see one God, one Creator, and one plan of grace from initiation through execution to consummation, from predestination to glorification, Scripture tells the story of God redeeming the people of God for His glory. In fact, the redemptive purpose and even the plan of God unfold in Scripture. The recurring theme of God's character, judgment for disobedience and sin, the blessing of faith and obedience, the Lord and Savior, and His sacrifice for sin and, and the coming kingdom and glory are the focus of Scripture. And so the Lord's intent is for man to know and even understand these themes because our lives are bound up with them. And so it's unthinkable that, that the Lord would allow Scripture to be lost in any way. Scripture is complete so that those who read it and those who understand it may be complete and equipped for every good work, 2 Timothy 3.16 says. In fact, the lost books, they refer to a collection of writings in the 12th and even the 13th century in Latin and published as the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden in the 1920s. These writings include uh, books called the, the Old Testament Studiograph along with the apocryphal New Testament writings. And so the Old Testament selection section of the lost books, it includes eight books. One, the conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. Two, the secrets of Enoch, also called Second Enoch, Psalms of Solomon. Fourth, the Odes of Solomon. Fifth, the, the letter of Orestes. And sixth, the fourth book of Maccabees. Seventh, the, the story of Acrophor. And eighth, the testament of the twelve patriarchs. And the modern translation of some books even comes from Ethiopia. Uh, the New Testament section includes a wide variety of writings ranging from the infancy gospel of Thomas, which was in the late 2nd century, to the epistle of Clement, a 1st century church father, to the Apostles' Creed, writings of the early church fathers, even late works that were falsely attributed to early writers such as the lost gospel of Peter. These books were not originally written with the intent uh, to become part of Scripture, nor were these works lost but known to the original audience and not accepted as historical writings of Scripture. In fact, some of these wise sayings are even odes of Solomon. They include vital historical information. And though not inspired as Scripture, some, some writings have played a vital role in the church's history. Each book in the Lost, Can uh, Lost Books collection must be individually studied to understand their historical importance, impact, and degree of accuracy. The early Jewish leaders uh, with, with the Old Testament and the church leaders in the New Testament considered all of Scripture inspired by God. Numerous early and accurate copies of Scripture still exist, offering ever evidence for the integrity of Scripture's books, why they're there, why, why they're there, why, why, why we read them still. And see, the existence and the rapid growth of the early church uh, along with uh, chain, the changed lives of millions of people, it demonstrates that the Bible is inspired and that, pe and that it impacts people's lives and cultures throughout time, throughout space, in ways that no other book can. 2 Timothy 3, 16-18 says this, All Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And so the so-called lost books of the Bible are neither lost, nor are they part of the Bible. And that's important because, you see, we have the Bible. We have 66 books that constitute the Word of God. And so we should believe those books, and we should take them for, for what they are, and, and believe them, and trust them, because God has given them to us, and they're, they're for our good. They, they teach us, and aim to instruct us. Uh, not only uh, on the manner in which we're to go, but most supremely about the person and the work of Jesus. Uh, the whole scripture as a whole point, and that whole point is to teach us about Jesus, to teach us about our sin, and teach about our need for Jesus, and, and about J what Jesus has done, and, and about how all of that relates to every facet and every part of our lives. And, and so this is really, really important that we have a good understanding of the doctrine of scripture. Well, see, I want to thank you today for listening or even watching this episode of the Servants of Grace Theology segment. Until next week, may God bless you and keep you.
Thank you for listening to the Servants of Grace podcast today. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you'd like to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or by searching Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this podcast on the front page of our website at servantsofgrace.org.